All right, everyone. Uh, welcome um, to uh, the Urban Forestry Commission meeting, October 4th, 2023. Um, our first order of business is public comment. And I see that Jackie Balance is there. Hi, Jackie. Are you Jackie's? Yes. Come on. Come on down, Jackie. How are I, you? Um, hi, everybody. I just want to say that I read uh, White Pine, the book that Jen recommended. It was a great read. Thank you so much. I recommend it too. Uh, Kent. Hello, Kent. Hi. Just asked me uh, last week if I percent of tree canopy by species and family, and and I done. I sent out an email with some details in the it's in that planting report. Um, she was curious about whether the uh, the um, trees the line no more than thirty percent in one species, and almost that we have more than thirty percent. And no, which one was it? I forget. We have more than ninety percent. Um, I'm sorry, I need to find my no, no, that's my okay. email. Kent, that's okay. Uh, you're you're oh, yeah. we have more than twenty. Your, hold, on. hold on, Kent, one second, please. Your zoom your zoom link or your internet feed is a little slow. So we're not uh, uh we're we're not getting all what uh, you're saying and you're frozen. Uh, okay. Um I'll just stop. Uh, yeah, that, that's okay if um <clears throat> I just wanted are you wanting to present that at the commission this evening? Because we have a block of time at the end of the meeting where there's 20 minutes that's not um set for any agenda item. I oops. We're not hearing you, Kent. Mm -hmm. Do the email to everybody on the commission. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. we have time if you get better connection and you'd like to. It's always interesting. I had just uh, off outside of the meeting, I had asked Kent to. Um, about where we are for percentages of different species in our canopy. And he graciously has gone through the data and come up with another report. So that's exciting. That will guide us in choosing species. Yeah, it sounds it sounds sounds wonderful. All right, so Ken's going to come back in. So let's see if we can get Kent. Connecting to audio. I think the technical difficult. I think it's the heat. I think the wires are sagging today. <laughs> Comcast is switching switches around on us. I don't know. Something's going on. <laughs> Molly, we can see you just fine. Everything's good. Kent, can yep. you hear us? Kent? Can you? Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you're frozen. I'm not sure. Oh, the Zoom. Ah. Yeah. It's it's, it's all Aldridge Street has got a Zoom ban today, I think, or something. <laughs> so. All right, Kent. See if you can if you can fix your technical difficulties. We'd love to hear from you later on in the meeting. Um, okay. Um, anyone else public comment? I just, no, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I want to apologize first of all about the minutes. I just realized like about 20 minutes ago that I did not send you the minutes that Bonnie sent me last week. So that's on me. I did send them to you and I also sent you the, um, the real agenda, uh, which is the one that's actually posted on the website, but you all had the link. So that's, um, and you were aware of what was going on. And I apologize. I've been 
gone since last Saturday. So I just came back. So it's been luckily Karen was gracious enough to post the, um, the agenda while I was uh, in Portland, Maine. So that got at least squared away. So this is a bonafide legal meeting. So if you wanted to take some time to read the minutes, now would be the time. Um, please do so. And don't worry about the five minute time frame because we have, we have plenty of time. I'm done. I'm done too. I finished it. Okay. Yeah. I'm all set. I had to I have to abstain anyway because I wasn't here. All set. Anyone else? Just waiting for David, I believe. Uh, I'm 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 done. I have a okay. comment though. Sure, please. Uh please share. Um, all right. So it wasn't Jordan who left early, it was me. That, that is correct. So, uh, and then under the incorporated native shrubs, um, I think the second sentence, he chose shrubs that are good for the Northeast, that are rather than good native to the Northeast. And also uh, there's just a typo, the final sentence role should be R-O-L-E. There is a role for these. That's it. Any other comments, questions? Okay, could I, uh, someone please uh, make a motion to accept the minutes as amended? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Uh, could we have a second for that motion, please? Second. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing no discussion, um, Bonnie, can we have a roll call, please? Sure. Rich? Uh, yes. Susan? Yes. Molly? Abstain. I was absent. Jen? I abstained too because I was on vacation. Okay. David? Yes. Richard? Yes. And Jordan? Yes. Okay. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> um chair reports so as we uh, talked about in our last meeting um we potentially have a or we we now have a um excuse me a um public shade tree hearing on the 10th of october uh, at um 773 park hill road i don't have the paperwork directly in front of me but 
<clears throat> what turned out to be something, um, it turned out to be much better than I thought because I went back there with the contractor and we actually found the true property lines in the front lot. So this is a very old flag lot that was con that was uh, subdivided oh, in probably early 2000. So they have very small frontage, um, but they need the frontage uh, in order to build the house. And also the septic system is uh, excruciating close to the public right away. So they really only require two very small trees to be removed, an inch and a half and a three inch. So that'll be on the 10th at um, 10, sorry, at uh, at 2.30 in the afternoon on the 10th. Um, I don't expect any issues. Um, the applicant has agreed to pay the mitigation for the loss of the trees and also to pay for, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a little hoarse today, my apologies. Um, and is going to pay for the uh, other uh, expenses, the legal ad, et cetera. So um, there are no other upcoming public safety hearing requests that I have in the queue at the moment. Um, just a couple of things. Um, the next meeting time frame is the 18th of October. Uh, I am not going to be able to be present. I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. for a week. So um, if uh, the commission would like to entertain, have a meeting with without the without without me, that would be great. That would be fine. I just need to know so I can set everything up ahead of time. Um, but that's entirely up to you all. I will leave that. You just sit on that for a little bit and tell me, what, you know, if you if you want to have a meeting on the 18th. Let's decide that at the end of this meeting. Sure. Yeah. Just think about it. Whatever, whatever works. Um, I just have to find a way to uh, make someone the co-host uh, because our IT support um, is a little, um, they're having a, some operational problems with uh, staffing at the moment. So this is the IT account that's assigned to me and I'm not allowed to make changes to it um, at an administrative level. So I can't assign like mm -hmm. Bonnie to be part I'd of I'd be inclined account. as we have during other planting seasons to skip a meeting because we have a lot of out volunteer hours going on for a lot of us for for the planting. Yeah, again, I, I'm I, I'm I like to defer to to you all, and you yeah. can decide, and I can make. I can Sorry, make. I'll wait till the end. Okay. Yeah. I can make what I'm doing. Yeah. So, <clears throat> a couple of things. Um, let's see. I did receive an email today, and I haven't. Uh, I I read it quickly because I was uh, in at Holy Cross doing a, a tree warden training today. Um, the residents, and I think, Jen, I talked to you about this in the past, and maybe Sue, we talked about Ice Pond Drive. Uh, yes. Ice Pond Drive is really half, it's like a third ash, a uh, third green ash, a third northern red oak, and a third yellow wood. And the residents that live at the very end of Ice Pond are the uh, folks that have all the ash trees. So that whole end of the street really doesn't look all that well. So they are really, they are hoping that we can do succession plantings. And I know that we had talked about doing, um, like going in there and doing succession plantings like we did at Village Hill prior to the ashes being removed. Um, and again, I know that we've sort of already mapped out the course for this fall for planting. Um, but if you think we could carve out any bandwidth, maybe we should have a discussion. Actually, maybe we should meet over on Ice Pond Drive to look at it, just so it's in front of your in front of the radar um, at some point, maybe next week, if, if you have time. Although next week is kind of a short week, so. Um, I can probably do that. I did go up and look at it. Okay. Um, if we do succession planting there, we need to get those ashes limbed up so there's you know they're pretty it's that whole street was planted really pretty closely you know what yes. i mean there's a yes. lot of trees yep. on that street yep. so um it's kind of like what uh bob did up at village hill he went ahead and just you know raised them way up so we had a little bit more room a little bit more light so we can talk about that too okay yeah. take time in this meeting no, I mean, we have time later on if we wanted to, but it's just I wanted to let you know that I received course. And of course, I received lots of correspondence from many people about 
dead trees, uh, low hanging branches this year in particular, uh, overextended branches because of the flush growth we've had. So it's been sort of a challenging, it's been sort of a challenging, I even got an email from a resident complaining that one of the newer trees we planted is now blocking the public right away, which I think is great, which means the tree is doing something. So, um, as much as I know it, it's not supposed to block the public right away. We definitely know the trees are definitely rooted in. So it is, it's exciting times for those young trees, you know, so it's all good. Thanks uh, the rain. That, yes. Um, a couple other things. So I, I, I told you that I was away. I, I attended um, the ISA New England uh, conference, uh, which was held in Portland, Maine. Um, it was Sunday through Tuesday. And then today I went to what Holy Cross um, and did a tree planting training tree risk seminar jordan was there this is part of our 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 uh, mass qualified tree warden training that we're both receiving so um again i apologize for the delayed uh issue with the minutes um but i just want to let you know that uh, at the conference um there were a lot of people i i knew but there were many people i didn't know and so what i was um interested is i i met the um the state urban forester for the New Hampshire and the state urban forest, similar to what Julie Coop, if you remember, Julie Coop came to visit us, same role as what Julie Coop does. And uh, his name is AJ and I don't remember his last name, but it'll come to me. Um, New Hampshire, um, if you're not familiar with New Hampshire, they do not have anything like MGL 87 and they really don't have uh, the tree warden role in New Hampshire. So it's individual foresters in different communities. It's um, highway uh, superintendents or foremen that manage the trees in New Hampshire. And the other thing too, is that New Hampshire, um, because they don't have MGL 87, the majority of trees in New Hampshire is public right of ways, unless they are actually taken by the community or the city to be public shade trees are private, which I found to be fascinating. Mm. So AJ um, and Liz McKinley, who is the equivalent of Molly Freilisher for she's the action community action forester for New Hampshire, they're going to put together a seminar um, where they invite um, as many tree wardens or um, city foresters and people with responsibilities in, in public um, in the pub responsibilities for trees in the public way to a forum to sort of introduce themselves and talk about public shade trees versus non-public shade trees and sort of get a feel as to who does what in New Hampshire. So um, I, I, I sort of lent us out as a, uh, as a group of people that might be interested in helping um, potentially if there's questions about some New Hampshire communities that are interested in um, having like a public shade tree commission model like we have. So I just stay tuned. Um, but I thought that was really interesting. And again, this is one of the things by going to these conferences, I can, I'm really sort of seeing how other people do things, uh, making professional connections, networking, um, seeing cutting edge technology, getting a lot of pesticide and ISA certification credits, which is always a good thing. Um, but, um, and then I got to meet, uh, I got to see Andy Hillman. Does anyone remember Andy Hillman from Ithaca? Wow. Jen. Jen does, right? So Andy Hillman, who was the um, urban forester and tree warden for the city of Ithaca, was one of the first people in the country uh, to work with Dr. Nina Basic at Cornell to install structural soil around Ithaca. So hmm. Andy's presentation was about trees that he had planted uh, 20, 25 years ago, maybe 20, 20 years ago in structural soil. And so he showed a whole bunch of slides in a PowerPoint um, and some of the trees, actually all the trees that were planted in CU soil were doing excellent, were doing well. And then he, he really, so he was able to go back recently and take a bunch of photos of them and packed his PowerPoint with those photos, plus a few interesting tree species that um, I think might be, or uh, might not species in essence, but uh, uh cultivars that might be interesting to add to our handbook to our repertoire so just uh another good uh, interesting topic just to kind of pertains to really what we're doing every day on the ground here um 
And then I also mentioned to you that I was going to be going to um, the herb, the World Forum on Urban Forestry, which is I'm leaving on the 14th and I won't be back until the 19th. So I will be gone for that week. Um, I will be doing emails and things in that nature and you can contact me if you need something. Um, and let's see. Oh, one other thing I wanted to tell you and I may not have told you, but I was, uh, I asked, um, so Society of Municipal Arborists, which um, again um, is a group of, it's a Society of Municipal Arborists is typically, a, it was a group of arborists around this country um, and they have a board of directors. Um, they have executive director who runs this and it basically is geared towards municipal, um, municipal government, municipal forestry operations, tree wardens, city foresters. Um, there's um, people that, um, I don't know if you ever heard of the company called Planet Geo. They are they're a company that actually does a lot of public outreach. They actually help develop uh, planting plans for communities. Um, they actually and and so I, I met. I had a Zoom call with them today um, because I was one of twenty people around the country that were selected to teach at uh, the Municipal Forestry Institute, which is happening in February. So, with that said. Um, you know, obviously, I I want to thank all of you profusely. I also want to thank the other members of Tree Northampton that are not here, because our urban forestry model has gained a lot of traction across, not only New England but now across the country. I think a lot of people recognize what we've done as a community, um, uh, as we've uh, together, um, you know, individually uh, as well. But uh, I think it's going to be an exciting. An exciting adventure. Um, it's really not about tr the the whole MFI is not about technical specifications of tree planting or the ANSI standards. It's actually really um, five days of leadership training. So the goal of the MFI is to uh, is to actually help existing urban foresters, um, you know, working in their particular um, community, and it's also to educate people that are interested in urban forestry that may have a different role in urban forestry or are changing careers. Um, so it's it's very interesting and using all obviously a lot of our experiences as the, um, these education facilitators in our own communities is gonna be very applicable to what we're teaching, uh, trying to teach folks. There's a whole curriculum developed and when it's done, uh, when it's completed, I, I'd like to share it with you so you could sort of see exactly what what what, what it uh, what it entails. So. Um, again, a really hats off to our community because of everything that we've done. Um, and it's also, um, I'm able to actually go around and talk to people um, about what we've done. I'm very proud of it. So thank you. Uh, I can't, I can't thank you enough, but I'll keep you updated on that. Um, there's a whole bunch of Zoom meetings between now and, and really uh, middle of February before you go to Georgia for the training. Yeah. Um. So I think I've said enough. I went way over my time frame, although we have extra time in the meeting. Um, I don't, does anyone have any questions? Uh, Rich Parrish, you and I are going to meet to talk about tree pruning. We're, we're still, Correct. We're, okay, we're still a go. So Rich Parrish and I are going to sit down and go over the, um, the latest and greatest inventory list that we have of the, trees we've planted to kind of map out um the tree plant uh, the tree pruning for this winter so hopefully uh i'm sure things will be as successful as they were last winter if not better um so stay tuned for that um synopsis at some meeting in the future and i don't i don't really have anything else to talk to you about but those, those are my highlights which, excuse me, do you have a list or any of the information that Andy Hillman uh, shared regarding cultivars that uh, were working well for them? I, I do. And I can actually, uh, I will craft an email to all of you so you can see it all. Yep. Awesome. It's, in, it's in a photograph because it was on a PowerPoint and I took a picture of the PowerPoint. So mm -hmm. I have to just download it. But yeah, some really good talks. I also got to hear Eric Rutgau. I, anyone read American Canopy? That's that's a David. Have you read American Canopy? You're a history buff. Uh, no, but I'm paying attention. 
Okay, so uh, Eric Ruckow spoke for an hour and a half about American Canopy, and uh, really the book is uh, obviously a historical book. He's a lawyer, he's uh, a writer, he's also been a professor at Yale. Um, he te he's a professor now, um, an associate professor at some uni uh, a um, university in Florida. I can't remember the name of it, but the book really talks about um, our our American canopy and where our can our American canopy started as far back as like the 1600s and how um, the, our own tree canopy has been, is part of our societal life. How we as human beings have rallied around trees um, since the birth of this country. And before that, um, very interesting book. I have a copy of it. Um, I started to read it, but I wasn't able to finish it before his talk. Um, and uh, he gave another talk as well about the the uh, a tale of two tragedies, which was from another book that he wrote, and um, I think that's the name of the book actually, tale of two Tra uh, tale of two tragedies, that talks about the decline, the historical decline of the American chestnut, um, and also um, the decline of the American elm. So really two really great uh, presentations, and I think really two great reads if you have the time and bandwidth to do so. So. So who's gives the, you, sorry. Who's the author again? Eric Rutgau. I'll I'll send you a link. I'll send you the right. I'll send you the information along with the tree species. I'll I'll do that tonight. I promise. I'll write it down and tape it to my forehead. So. So yeah, it was in a, it was an event. It was a nice uh, conference, and I had there's other things I could tell you about. But we don't have enough time, and it's not really necessarily pertinent. But it was really good to meet other urban foresters and make some connections with people. So, um, all right. Fall planting update. And I'm going to stop talking. So Jen or Sue, I'm going to put this on you because you actually, I've just really been delivering the trees. You guys have been putting them in the ground. So, and, and Rich and David and a bunch of other people that aren't here. Oh, wait, one other thing. Sorry. Rob says hello. I totally forgot. Oh. It's the most important thing I went to Portland for, right? Never mind ISA. I, <laughs> we Sorry. Man, I just blew that. Okay. We actually went to Portland uh, a day early so we could meet with Rob and uh, Martha. And uh, we went out to dinner with them. So Rob says hello. He misses all of us. Uh, well, he doesn't miss me at the moment, but he misses all of you um and uh he's doing well um i i saw where he's he's building his house uh he brought us over to that it was really uh in a nice location it's the house the shell is complete so they're working on the siding at this point but he's he's doing well he really misses the tree he really misses the tree planting portland's tree canopy if anyone's been there and particularly south portland is um really needs some help um, whether Rob decides to do some type of volunteering work, uh, there, I don't know yet. He's kind of busy building a house right now. So, but he says, hello, he said, make he says, my only thing I was supposed to do today was tell all of you that Rob said hello. And I've made it. <laughs> so, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> uh, you want me to go Sue? I guess I will. Um, so we, yes, sorry, okay. it, she's chime in if I miss some. So ballpark, we planted about 50 trees in the last couple of weeks. Um, we, uh, were planting Wednesday and Saturday mornings. We have a little bit smaller crew on Wednesdays because of, uh, injuries and various other things and uh we're sue and i are working hard to go through all these various lists and tie up a bunch of loose ends and running around and looking at is there a tree there is there a stake there is you know has it been dig safe all that kind of stuff so i feel like we're doing pretty well we're um you know plowing along i've had some good help from rob and some uh uh, rich and some other rich parish and some other folks to get some other trees in the ground when I need you know we don't have enough people or different days so I feel like we're doing pretty well I have a meeting with rich 
Tree Warden Rich on Friday that we're gonna, we're kind of at a, uh, not a stopping place, but at a, a juncture. And I need to get some guidance on where to go and what to do. So um, any anything else, Sue? A lot of the plantings are not, it's a little challenging because a lot of the plants are spread out. We don't have big plantings that are all on one street or all, you know, so it's a little tough when we've got volunteers, we're putting out between six and eight or nine trees a time. And that seems like doable right now. And also, especially when you spread people out, um, we have to go back and pick up all the tools and, you know, it's a little bit of a, a thing, but I feel like we're doing pretty good. So. And it's a lot thanks to your leadership, Jen. Thank you for <laughs> for really embracing this and staying on top of stuff. You're welcome. So I think we're not going to plant this weekend because it's supposed to rain and it's a holiday weekend. So uh, we'll have to get that message out. But uh, yeah. Sue and I meet regularly and phone calls in between. <laughs> Thank God for Sue. That's all I got to say. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I can help you. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? We had a good replant on some trees at Jackson Street School. Um, so that was good. It was a little wet. but. And we're we moving it. towards the goal of getting all the trees, the existing trees in the nursery. So it's been this big puzzle of looking at the trees that needed replacing because they died and which stumps are ground and for, re for the removal trees and then what we have and figuring out the species. So Jen's um, expertise and willingness to research also a certain cultivar to make sure that they're well sited Mm -hmm. And that, um, and that we're using the trees that had already been purchased, so that they live in our public benefit. We're getting there on that, and then that's why we need stats for where we are with species, the percentage of different species in our canopy, so we can do forward planning on what the city should acquire in terms of new inventory for this fall, even a little this fall, but, and then spring going forward. Coming along. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Um, I have not heard back from, I did send John that from Amherst Nursery, the list of trees that we wanted. I have not heard back from him, but I will reach out to him tomorrow. Um, did um again because I haven't been at the office, um, did the mulch get used on the trailer for all the other trees at Jackson Street? Uh so I apply I applied mulch to 10, I think, of the trees. Okay. I went back last night with the cart and the buckets and the trailer was gone. So I would have done the rest, but but oh yeah, it got it did, it got it got picked up on yeah. uh so Monday. that's um, I just didn't have time that the first run through. That's okay. I, you let, if you let me know there's a convenient time, I can I can get you buckets. Our problem is we had someone. Um, the reason I had to do it though with the trailers because someone stole a whole bunch of our green buckets out of the cemetery. Actually, mm -hmm. so um, so we're short of green buckets. So we have enough to basically satisfy the plantings, and so we couldn't get any more to you. But if you know an exact amount that you want, and we can manage it, um, I can. Could try to get them over there to the school okay so just shoot me shoot me an email uh, i'll shoot you an email yeah okay all right um uh uh jen and sue a qu question for you the uh the b and b trees that are left in the nursery the swamp white oaks and the tilia tomentosa do you think you'll have homes for those before the winter um i feel like the Tilias are all spoken for. Just looking at the tree tracker, I think.
off the top of my head, I think the, let me see if I can. If you can't find it at this point, we can just talk about it when we meet. But I'm just curious because I, oh, I, I was I was muted. Um, you want to know about the um, swamp white oaks are spoken for. OK. And the rest of the, the remaining. And there's dip. one Linden, but I think, you know, those are so easy to use. One got freed up, so I don't think. You know, that's a pretty tight supply. We have a lot of, um, we have a couple hardy rubbers, a, a lot of Kentucky coffee trees, meta sequoias, yep. a couple shag bark hickories. We have one set in shadow, mm -hmm. Linden, but again, um, it, it freed up because of a change we made. And I think we'll probably snap that up for something. Okay. All right. Perfect. Just wanted to check because those are all the B and B's that are outside the nursery, but um, we can have a further conversation when we meet at the nursery, I think about what's, what's there, but um, yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Yeah. Jen will have the list. Okay. Thank you very much. So I, mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Uh, anyone have any questions for Sue or Jen? Okay, so urban forestry master plan. So I I I left twenty minutes in this slot for this conversation. I didn't know if any of you had a chance to read any of that information that I sent you. If you haven't, it's totally understandable. It's a lot to digest. Um, I I would actually like to leave it on there because I think we need to. I need. I think at some point in time we need to have a, a a good discussion about it. Yes, Jen. I didn't have time to read them, but um, I will. Um, I do. I just have a question. Is it typical? Like who who authored them? Like who is it usually a committee or do they have a consultant or do they have you, you know what I mean? Yeah, so some of the larger communities like Cambridge, um, Cambridge used a consultant. Uh, Boston uh, used a consultant, uh, and there they had public meetings that were similar to um, like the Main Street redesign, or when we had all those public meetings about the climate resiliency and regeneration plan. They were at the senior center. If you may have attended, um, you know, a, does like a design charrette. Uh, yeah. You know, and I, and we're not we're not starting from scratch per se. I mean, we're starting. We have a obviously a, a huge leg up on this, but um, so those plans that I sent you are just plans that were easy to access, and they may not actually, they may not really be what we're looking for. But you can tailor a plan. Mm -hmm. There are communities that have done their own type of plan where they just do an inventory and then they set metrices. Um, based upon the inventory or the tree management plan, similar to what we have done, um, because that's how we made our large, uh, our table in the very beginning when we first, uh, I think that was like 2017 or 18, where we decided, you know, we're gonna plant so many trees um, here and so many trees here, and we'd have so many ad hoc trees, et cetera. Um, but I think for me, the urban forestry master plan sort of captures all of that and um, and more because I I would like to have the urban forestry master plan sort of talk about the the aftercare of all this plant material and the actual funding um, for um, the operations of uh, whether it be the DPW or partnerships with Tree Northampton or the commission or however we're going to get some of this work done but there has to be a discussion and sort of a quantifying of what we're what we're taking care of how much it costs, how much mortality we have a year on average, how many trees we need to replace every year, and how we're going to pay for it. 
and then you know the whole umbrella of like citizen input around the whole thing you know because i really don't i when i when i retire or, or some of us you know stop being commissioners um you know we'll have new people here and it will be nice to be able to hand something off to them and so i you know and maybe we have to do it in stages because maybe we do a, another tree inventory, complete tree inventory and a new management plan. And then we have a scaled down version of an urban forestry master plan that sort of maps it out. But I, I think um, the plan that we have with like the climate resiliency regeneration plan, there's really, there's really nothing in there that really talks about the metrices about how to get to, you know, the sustainable Northampton that we want canopy wise, you know, we're fortunate. We're, we're not dealing with like just 25% canopy. We have, you know, probably 48 plus uh, percentage canopy. So we're fortunate. Um, but again, I think it's just something to think about. So I, I will continue to do some research. If you wouldn't mind, if you had a moment to read some of those things that I sent you, I will try to find other plans that are actually um, not as large maybe as those two. Um, and then maybe that would be something we can talk about at a future meeting, but I'll sort of leave that tucked in there, couched in there for us to talk about, if that's okay with everyone. Now, perhaps you understand, um, this rich, um, something I read, I think it was in today's paper, a reference to the new stretch code that was adopted by our city council. Yes. It has a requirement for on-site solar for all building projects. Is that true? Is that, they, did I understand yes. that correctly? I believe so. And the reason they're doing that is because Northampton is moving to a all fossil fuel free by right construction. So after a certain date, whenever the state legislature approves this home rule petition, the city will be able to tell a potential applicant for a, that wants to build a home here that it has to be um, completely carbon neutral. And on-site solar on was the part solar. that I didn't really understand yeah. was in there before. So on that site, could create a tremendous pressure on trees. I, I think it's going to create a, 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 a no questions asked. It, it's going to have, it's going to have a, <clears throat> a very interesting, potentially a very interesting effect because of the fact that you know, the first thing that I think people think about when they're trying to be car carbon neutral, the it's uh, <coughs> solar panels, because the combination of the cr the credits that you get, obviously, for it, plus the reduction in your own electric bill. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that I, I just, I don't know, I also think part of it, too, is I think a lot of people are, and this is just my take, and this is not the commission's take, I just as a disclaimer, but I think a lot of people... Um, are not necessarily in touch with nature uh, like they once were. And I think part of that is that people are, people still look at trees like they are just a tree and we can just cut one down and plant another one. And I think that really is sort of sad because we have these, we have these pieces of infrastructure that are living, that are carbon sinks, that are diffusing rainwater, that are absorbing rainwater. Um, that are providing shade, uh, cooling your house, providing all these benefits, and people still look at them as that, well, they're just trees, we can replace them. And actually, I can, I can reduce my carbon footprint if I put these solar panels on my house. And I understand that. I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about solar panels. I'm just, I just think people don't realize necessarily um, how great the benefits are of trees and how, you know, especially when you're talking about trees in the public right of way, <laughs> These trees are actually, they're owned by everyone. They're not just the individual homeowners in front of that particular tree that needs some removal for solar usage. So I I, I don't think that, um, I, I found it to be interesting that this or this home rule petition is moving forward with really out without any like consideration to um, what it's going to do potentially to private canopy throughout the, throughout the city. But I, yes, Jen, sorry. That's okay. I, uh, this is, I, um, was really, uh, taken aback when I 
saw that as well. And I was like, whoa, I hadn't heard about this till now, but could be just me not being as clued in as I could be. Um, but I think that's all the more reason to really pursue this um, management plan because, um, you know, it'll, it, it will attempt, it, it's a possibility that we could make this tree planting and care program sustainable, you know, in the long run that it, that we could, you know, there's a lot of competition in the sustainability sphere, you know, and they've just hired a person in the planning department to, you know, it, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of, you know, gray infrastructure that is easier for people to understand, I think, than uh, green infrastructure. And um, so I just think the management plan to me is one of the most important things we could do um, to, to be able to, you know, even raise, have a seat at the table to say, wait a second, you know, let's just take a breath for a minute and let's think about this and at least be able to have some seat at the table and be able to negotiate for some of this stuff. It's yeah, I guess simple. it's hard to follow so many different aspects of city government, but I was a little shocked when I saw mandatory on-site solar. So, yeah, I think it's a concern. Um, whatever we can do to put out a blueprint um, certainly what Kent's, Kent's work has been really helpful. So we have, you know, a starting place as if we start to see big declines. But I can't see how they're not going to cut down a lot of trees if they have, if everyone has to have solar. The decline in uh, Cambridge's private canopy was the reason that drove their the ordinance to Why regulate not? trees on private land yep because that's where they were losing them and that's where there was the space to i mean we're in a little different situation but yeah and i just read this article in the newspaper about uh shoot i have my i have a bad memory for numbers but there was like a a very high percentage of uh parking lots that are, could be covered with solar panels, solar canopies that would, um, it was a much higher percentage than I thought that could make this huge impact on becoming carbon neutral by whatever the date was. It was, mm -hmm. I, I was blown away at like what an impact that would make, you know, so. I believe the same article also talked about how it's not sustainable to actually, um, put uh you know cover over land mass for mm -hmm. solar panels because of the amount of carbon sequest sequestration that's already happened um that they would actually have to just create more solar capacity and reduce our reliance on fossil fuels to re to bake make that loss of all that canopy carbon neutral i was just trying to find the article and i can't open it for whatever reason because that was in today's gazette or yesterday's gazette it was in the Globe today. Okay. Or um, two days ago. If somebody could get a hold of that and uh, distribute it to us, that would be a, just a great thing to have in my, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. I'll... I don't subscribe to the Globe and they never let me read a single article. <laughs> oh, I thought I could paste it. Though. I'm pretty sure it was in the Gazette. I was in the Gazette? I'm pretty yeah. sure. Because I don't read the Globe unless it was in the Sunday New York Times. Mm -hmm. The article there. about rooftop and parking lot solar is definitely in the Globe. I have it open. I don't know how. What's the best way to send it to all of you? Um, can, can you print it as a? Can you print it as a PDF? Uh, yeah, and then email it to everybody. Mm, that's the best way. Yeah. Oh. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Can't, can't open it. So you know, I I There's always a couple of articles on making the same point recently. I don't know if they're talking about both the same study or if there were two different studies, but saying that the amount of solar 
potential in parking lots and rooftops in Massachusetts is huge yeah. and would easily meet our needs if we used it and could encourage encourage the use of it rather than having people cutting down forests or covering over farmland for solar. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty uh it's pretty in, it's pretty interesting. I mean, our, our drive to electrify um everything as well to try to reduce our reliance on fossil fuels really has an an unfortunate an unfortunate intent an unintended consequence which is tree canopy loss. And I think the other thing too the article said if I remember correctly they talked about the wind farms that they had hoped to be up and running by 2030 would would not be able to be online um because of the uh, increased costs of the construction of these offshore wind farms that they were hoping to offset some of the solar capacity that would be needed on rooftops with wind with the wind farms so that was another interesting it's another interesting thing i mean we're at carbon neutrality we're getting there slowly but i definitely think that it's it's got i feel like there's always we're always going to be in a position where we have to come in and sort of be like not the bad person but sort of just say well wait a second you know we have this ordinance now and we're losing tree canopy um, because you're requiring rooftop solar on on single family homes that are by right because you want them to be fossil fuel free you know i mean it's like you can never win it's like we 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 get through one ordinance issue and then now we have another issue so it's um Sometimes I think they like to leave us. Uh, uh, sometimes I think we are not necessarily on, um, you know, the first line of this uh, list of people to call to talk about these things. And I, I, for good reason, I would imagine, because they don't want to hear what we have to say, possibly. Um, I think a lot of the solutions, you know, are trying to harness the markets and there's no tree lobby, but there's a solar lobby and there's. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they want people to be able to make money off this conversion and the trees don't provide any companies with the kind of money that other some of the other solutions offer very good point sue not, i'm not against markets at all i mean i live in re try to live in reality but yeah no i'm the same way i i, I recognize that um you know, we we are we live in the world that we live in, and you know, our job is to try to make the world a better place to live in by propagating, continuing propagating our canopy. Um, but I mean, getting to carbon neutrality, the reality is is that it's mul it's multiple avenues to get there. It's not just let's plant a billion trees. It's not let build. Let's not just build a billion panels of uh, solar infrastructure. It's combination of everything. So, mm. but, and hopefully, but, it's parking lots, and that sounds great. It does, but then again, parking lots, parking lots are very expensive to build because there's quite a superstructure that has to hold up the solar panels, plus the snow load, um, plus all the electrical infrastructure um, that's involved in actually wiring those things together and then sending it to um, the utility company, et cetera. So I think it's, it's we're going to be talking about this a lot, I think, but sorry, I'm sorry to be a, a downer, but. So we're back to the master plan. It's again a maybe a blueprint or a a way to institutionalize what we've been doing. So yeah. yes, and again, the iterations that I sent you are just for us to look at. It's just something to turn your turn your wheels if, and make you think. So if we had a a community on in on our scale, I don't mean to make you go running around looking for no, stuff. It's okay. but no, I don't mind. My that job. Good idea. Yep. I, I will do that. I mean, it seems to me that a lot of the communities that have done these master plans are communities that have uh, very large environmental justice um, or social uh, or socioeconomic um, disparities in their community. Um, they also, the federal dollars, obviously, that are um, just been dispersed are also geared towards uh, planting in, in EJ areas and planting in uh, communities um, or working in communities or sending money to funding to communities that are have socioeconomic issues as well. So I think it's, 
you know, we may end up actually having to apply for another DCR grant to do some of this work and we might have to do it in stages. But I think, again, it's really important to quantify what we're doing for the next group of people that come along um, on, you know, on the commission and the next tree warden or urban forester or whatever the person may be. So, but, okay, I will. Kent, thank you for the article. Okay, uh, spotter lantern fly update. Um, Molly, Rich, could I oh, just? Oh uh, yeah, interject? sorry, David, I didn't see you. My apologies. Go ahead. Um, there, Julie Coop at the at DCR presented to this commission about the challenge grants. Yes, the the deadline is November first. Uh, that is that is correct, but we have to have a letter of intent by October first. That's true. So, but I, is that? You don't think that deadline can be finessed, provided the and the application submitted on. I mean, I it's possible, but mm -hmm. I think we really need to have. I my experience with doing the last challenge grant is that I don't think we have enough information about exactly what we want. Okay. So it be it would be sort of I think it would be difficult to really write a narrative that would explain everything that we want at this point. I think that's probably what we ought to think about doing is putting a narrative together or thinking about exactly what we want, putting pen to paper, and then seeing what funding mechanisms are available. And of course, the other thing too, is that, you know, we, I am going to have to approach the mayor um, if the commission does decide to want to do a plan like this and we endorse this, then we have to ask the mayor if we get the mayor's approval um, to do a plan like this, because if it is a challenge grant, then there's always a match to it. Um, yeah. 50, 50. The, yeah. Or yes, 50% match, yeah. Or the environmental justice grant, the EEA grants um, that I don't think we're actually would be eligible for because I don't think we have enough environmental justice um, uh, square miles here, but I'm not sure about that just yet. So that's something I've got to look into if there's a threshold. I think there's a threshold, but... Okay, and there's there's one one more idea I have, which is you know Northampton recently created this climate action and project administration CAPA department. Yeah, and they just hired their first uh, Carol Collins, who was appointed by the mayor as the first director. Maybe we yes. should invite her to the next commission meeting because she's um, presumably trying to synthesize these new ordinances, uh, urban forestry objectives. Uh, yes, I think that would be good. I don't know if we'll get her right away, but I think uh, we can try to, we definitely, I'll send an invitation when she's, uh, when she's on board, yeah. see if she'd be willing to come and talk because I, I don't really know what the exact mission of that um, department is at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they met necessarily have, they, they have a framework, I believe, but they've been waiting to staff it fully before they actually try to finish the framework and actually implement the ability, you know, um, maybe set the goals and implement a way to get the goals accomplished. So, but all really good points, David. Thank you. Um, and I'll make a little note of that. What is her, what is her name again? Carol Collins? Is that? Yeah. Carol with an E. So C-A-R-O-L-E Collins. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, invite. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions before we move on? Uh, spotter lantern fly update. Um, I have the draft letter that Molly sent me. I sent it to, um, I had Donna take a look at it. She made some minor edits. I just got it back. I want to flip it back to you so you can just take a quick look at it. And then um, if you're good with it, then what I'll end up doing is I will put it on the letterhead um, and send it uh, to the mayor's office and get the mayor's approval to send it. And uh, then we've just got to sort through the addresses. To... Okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it'd be good if we could do it soon because um, yep. if, if the adults are out, you know, now's the time to do it before. Okay. Yep, agreed. My goal is to flip that. I can... Um, try to get that draft maybe back to you tonight or tomorrow morning. Okay. Okay. And then what's the, so once um, the mayor approves it, then 
uh, who's going to take care of the actual addressing and mailing and everything? Oh, I might be able to ask Bonnie to help me. Or unless some, you know, because we can create uh, probably the actual address labels right out of our uh, utility billing. Okay. Account. There's not too many. Not that many, really. Okay. All right. Great. Yeah. I mean, I would actually like to see if the mayor would be, I mean, I don't really look at the mayor's social, like the city's social media page. So I don't really know what they're posting, um, if they're using it for these types of things. But maybe we, I could ask if they would be willing to do that as well. <laughs> Oh, uh, put the letter on the social media page? Yeah. Yeah, big be... spotter lantern update. Here's a letter from the Urban Forestry Commission meeting. Thank you, you know, members of the Urban Forestry Commission. Here's what it looks like. Here's some links. You know, call MDAR if you find it. Oh, yeah. Also, do you have the um, inserts that you're going to need to put in the letters? No, I do not. Okay. We need... Um, Sue, I think, has the little cards. Okay. And we were going to print out, um, I think we were going to print out that sheet that had the information about Atlantis. And, and remind me, Molly, where, what sheet was that that we were going to use again? It was a, um, I think I sent it to you or maybe included it in a letter. I think, I think um, you did. Let, let me go find it. And what I'll do is I will send you the draft email. I mean, the draft letter now. And yeah. then I'll send that back to all of you to make sure that's what we're supposed to be putting okay. in. Okay, right. And maybe Sue, if you could get the cards to Rich, the little ID cards for the spotted lantern fly. Then okay, those, I can do that. Those could go in a letter too. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for about or any other discussion about spotted lantern fly? Just, just. Might some version of that letter go into the uh, Daily Hampshire Gazette just to get a, you know, it's a pretty broad distribution end, but that that's what newspapers are for. For dis That's true. Um, yeah, I don't know if we could, I don't know if it would be like, it wouldn't be considered a letter to the editor. It would be more like an advertisement. No, you know, maybe make an article out of it or something just for in, just getting the information out there. Hmm. Maybe one of their reporters can make a story out of it. Uh, That's a good idea. I'll um I'll follow up on that after after the letter goes out. Okay. And maybe I'm, it wouldn't be a letter that would go in the Gazette, but maybe it could be some kind of little article about Spotted okay. Lantern Fly and asking people to look for it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments? Uh... So we have, let's see, it's 5.30. We, um, I, if you don't mind, I just wanted to ask, David, did you, did you give any more thought um, to the, um, the list of the setback, the natives, the, the plant material that was going to be set back, that was going to be native more on a shrub or a small tree? Have you done anything? Is it, you uh, I, no, I didn't give in any more thought to it, but I'll reiterate that um, uh, I would love for Jen at some point, not I don't want to put you on the spot now, but to take a look at the list and just to provide your thoughts on the viability of these different understory trees. David, I'm happy to work with you on that as well. Yeah, and Jordan too, right? Maybe we should get that on the agenda for next time so that Jen, Jordan, myself can prepare. Sure. Yep. I, I wasn't meaning to put you on the spot. I was just because yeah. we had some extra time. I was just didn't know if you. Okay. So that would be for the November 1st, unless we're not going to have a meeting, unless you're going to have a meeting next month. I'm um, sorry, in two weeks. My apologies. I'm already thinking the next month. It's already November. <laughs> okay. So Jen, Jordan, and David. Um, one thing I wanted to say 
about that is that um, when uh, I was in Portland, and this just made me think of this, um, we had this, uh, what they call the Trek to Trees. So it was 13 pages um, of questions about uh, trees that there was a map provided for us. And we had to follow this mapped route. And we went all through the city within probably two miles of the of the event um, location. And they we had, a, you know, three questions per group of trees. And uh, it was very interesting because um, typically like you're walking from point A to point B and you just want to get to point B. Um, but it made you stop and look at all the plant material. And of course, that's what I do anyways, uh, to the chagrin of my uh to the chagrin of my wife many at uh, at times but uh but when we the end of the trek to trees we ended up in a small uh park near exchange street in portland i don't know if any of you have ever been there but it's a very small park um it's not it's probably the size of um trinity Royal park in florence and it is so well done with plant material um, it has uh, overstory trees. It has understory plant material. It has shrubs um, and, and all really done very nicely um, in raised, um, in very short raised beds, um, granite beds. Um, mount, some of the plantings were mounted, but nicely done. Um, the root flares were not buried on most of them. So it kind of gave me pause. And I thought about this whole thought process about providing um more more native plant material or more native woody plant material that actually is not necessary in the form of a tree and this is also i think important for us to think about as well as we're having these conversations about the whole solar issue and about you know our, our mission has been to provide very broad very large canopy trees in their maturity because we want to, you know, advert, we want to really, you know, prevent the uh, um, urban heat island issues. But I really think that this would be a way for us to actually look at this from a different lens. So that's just my, my uh, thoughts on that. Uh, Jackie. Yeah. What's the name of that park again? I don't remember the name of the park, but what's... it's on exchange street in portland thank you yep uh if i can remember to uh on my little list on my previous page i can send you a maybe a um a link to a google map so you can see it uh, so okay um okay any any other business not anticipated by the chair Anyone? My network seems to be working better. If you want yeah. me to talk about um, sure. species, um, top species and top families. Yes, that'd, know, yes that'd be great. You, can, you want me to present? Or to yeah, speak? sure. I'll, let me make you. Let me make you a co-host. Hold on one second. Okay, Kent, you are now a co-host. Uh, let's see. There we go. Can you see this report? Mm -hmm. Wow. So this is a report that I've shown you before, but it has a couple of new sections. Um, I went through and figured out um, the binomial names of all the planted and inventory trees, which was quite a project, actually, because there's... Anyway... So the top species, are, there's three species of um, maple that are the top, but none of them is more than 10%, which is the uh, the guideline for how much you, you know you want of one species. Um, and because you're not planting Acer, it's getting better if you look at 2015 versus 2022. Um, yeah. because the number of other species that have been planted, the percents, are going down on these top species. Um, for genus, uh, this is this I had already, but just to go over it again, there is more than 20% of Acer. So that's the only genus that's uh, ahead of the 20% guideline. Although again, because of the extensive planting in other genera, um, the percent has gone down quite a lot. 
So that's at least trending in the right direction. Um, and for families, uh, top family is Stepin to say, I have no idea how to pronounce some of these things or even what they are, but um, <laughs> that's actually gone from over 30% to below 30% with the planting. So that's now within the guideline and everything else is quite a bit lower. And that sapin in sapin DCAE uh, includes uh, maples, just so people know. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the, the top <laughs> three species are all, are, are all um, maples and just these add up to 22%. So that gets uh, pretty close to that um, 26%. So this is all available on my website. I sent out a link. Um, I'm happy to answer more questions or talk about it more right now. But really, I just wanted to point out that I, I did do this analysis and, and the results are available. Thank you. You're welcome. That is just what we, well, what Sue and I needed Ken, I really appreciate it because I, I had no idea kind of where we were and how to inform what we try to, you know, populate with. So thank you so much. This is incredible. Yes, thank you. You're so we welcome. still are safely under, we haven't overplanted anything. No, there's nothing that's gone in the wrong direction um, or too much. Um, I do actually have a couple of questions and points about this. So this is um, only data through the last fall planting. I don't have data for the spring. And of course, the, this fall is in progress, so I don't have that. And I don't know how that might be updated. I know, Rich, that's probably um, a question for you. Uh, um, so, yeah, so, so the way it's updated is that um when uh jen or sue generate tree planting lists just like rob did um i save the list and then at the end of the planting season all the data is entered to the spreadsheet so at the end of december i should have a spreadsheet for this year that's going to have all that data and then i can okay. i can export i can export that to you and then you can update this and other things that you have uh done for us as well that were based on that if you need that okay. things. So it'll just be for the whole year. You don't have it. There won't be an update just for spring of this year. I mean, I could probably give you one, but I don't, I would have to, I have to comb through it because we had yeah. to pull out so many trees and I have to make sure that the dead tree list is correct the way that we have yeah. to do it in the spreadsheet, but. All right. Well, it's, it's really up to you. Um, when there's okay. data available, I'm happy to redo the analysis. Okay. And the other question I had, the dead tree data that I have only is for the trees that have been planted since 2015, I think. Yeah. I don't know if there's any record of trees in the initial Davy inventory that have died, or they've been, have they been removed from that? They, they, they're, they're removed and turned into vacant sites. Okay, so then this only counts uh, still living trees from that 2015 inventory. That's correct. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. But it's interesting to see that you know it's, sometimes it feels like we planted a lot of one kind, but um, if people click on the link to the actual report, yeah, the, we're planting um, kind of equal numbers of all these different trees. Yeah, here's what's actually been planted. Um, and there's really nothing that is greater than 8% of all the planting by by species anyway. And they're kind of in the ballpark of, I mean, we can see here, you know, some of them like the Quercus bicolors, the swamp white oak, you need a very special site for that tree. It's a big tree, for instance, but lots of them are, you know, they're coming along evenly. I guess actually now that I have figured out the, um, well, I have the family and, and genus for the um, trees planted, I guess. Oh, no, I did do that. I did top 
genera planted and top families planted. So that's also in here. Um, but again, there's there's nothing really um, dominant by species, genus, or family. So that's good, I think. Yeah, this is really neat to see. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, well, that's it for me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, does anyone else have either questions for Kent or something else they'd like to bring up during this time that's not on the agenda? Wow. Silence in the room. <laughs> um, we talk about meetings. Yes. Oh, right. Yes. Hmm. Um, so I just wait oh. until I think we could probably skip it. I don't think the letter, like the spotted lanternfly letter, doesn't require a meeting. No. It would give us time to, we could kind of set aside the time to look at those uh, plants, those uh, strategic plans, you know. Oh, that's a good idea. Get a yep. little more informed about that. So everybody keeps it on their calendar and pretend yeah. that they have to attend. Yeah. Tell right. the family, go to my tree meeting. Yeah, that's your homework. You have to go to the yeah. tree, sit in front of Close your computer, the door. open, yep. Next, on the 18th. Okay, good idea. Yeah. So with that said, I think our next meeting will be on the 1st of November. Is that uh, what I'm... The calendar. Yeah, no, Wednesday, November 1st. All right. How can it be November? So soon. so soon it's not it's not it's november not. i know but so what? soon so <laughs> and then it goes molly, molly's molly's having a minor revolt over there <laughs> yeah. oh we have to be in the present moment too yes <laughs> so um Great. If uh, so, I I'm, let me just double check. I owe the spotter lantern fly draft. I owe um, a flip back of the uh, insert for the spotter lantern fly, just to make sure that's we're going to be using the right one. Mm -hmm. um, Mo uh, Molly, you're going to um, think about the uh, potential article for the Daily Hampshire Gazette for spotter lantern fly, possibly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the um, planting the pl the plant material list or the woody plant material list for setbacks um is going to be jen jordan and david okay if you want to schedule a meeting to actually meet in person um or meet on zoom just let me know and we can make that happen if you feel that's what you need to do or if you want to work independently to your next meeting um i Excuse me, sorry. If it was okay. that was there just one uh email recently about that? There was a list that was attached. Is that right? There was yep. okay. And then, I, and then, and then in is. our in our shared drive, there is a list in there as well. That's where the list lives if you want to just pull it out in the shared okay. drive. Great. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, uh, as, as far as the email, sorry to interrupt. Um, David, is that the one that you sent um with the initial list? You're muted. Uh, yeah, I can. Well, did are people wanting more than the original list? No, just to clarify, that's that's sort of our jumping off point for discussion. Yes, I think so. Perfect. Good email. Awesome. Yeah. I'm wondering if everybody has their link to the shared drive still. If so we have new, two new people. No, I'm not I, sure I do. I do not. So, okay. So that's them. all right. Let me fix that. Give Rich one more thing to do. I think there's some special handshake that you have to before you get that. <laughs> Gladly. Code word. Won't be my Code first. Um, that cat I'm, is beautiful. I'm, I'm going to relinquish the chair. I'm done now. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so share drive for uh, Jordan and Rich. Thank you. Yeah, and re and uh, just as a re friendly reminder to the two of you, that is uh, basically uh, a read only. Um, you you can't you are you should not make any edits to anything that's in there. The reason that is is because it violates open meeting law. So that's just a repository of all the work that we've done. So if you want to edit something that's in there, um, pull it out and you must, uh, you can look at it, you can make a copy of it, keep it on your own drive if you like, and then edit it and then send it to the commission so we can actually have a discussion about it in, in, pu in public, okay? Or if you have a question of wh what you need to do, just send me an email. Um, I just don't wanna be editing things um, on our own outside of the public meeting forum where um, residents are not able to weigh in on what we're doing, okay? But if you make a copy of it, I, I believe that you have to rename it so you it doesn't end up. We ran into this problem when I was teaching. I think it's just a reminder. Maybe everybody knows that, but I think it says copy. If you do something, it'll, you have to rename it. I, I'm pretty yeah, sure. So so no. yeah, what you can do is because it's in a Google Doc, you can convert it. You can move it to you don't move it because then it'll disappear out of there. But you can just convert it to a Word document and you can download it onto your own computer to review it and whatever you need to do with it. And then if you want to make changes to it, then you would have to talk to the you know you send an email to all the commissioners and say I I saw this document. I would like to make changes at it. Can we have a discussion, Rich? Can you put it on our agenda for next meeting? Etc. That way, everything's done with transparency. All right. So, uh, lists. Uh, see, Jen, Jordan, and David. Uh, you know what I'll do too. While I'm in there, I will find the. Um, I'll find the, the list that we that David originally generated uh, because I turned it into a Word doc just to make it easier to manipulate. Because I think David sent it to us all in an email, so I'll send that to you as well while I'm in there. And then permission for the share drive for Jordan and Rich Parish. Okay, I have big stars next to what I'm supposed to do. Draft, butter, lantern, fly. And then I've got to send you uh, the Eric uh, Rutgau um, books, the Andy Hillman uh, trees, and maybe if I can find a link so you can take a look at that park in Portland that I was talking about. People are interested in Andy Hillman, um, who's the CU soil guy. If you go to the Urban Horticulture Institute uh, website, maybe I should send everybody this link. And there's all these videos, all this stuff about early work with CU soil, and he's on there. And I'll, I'll write myself a note, and I'll send you guys a link to that. It's a great website anyways. It's got tons of info. It does. And another good... Um publication that you could that's free and online is the uh, casey tree foundation um has a um their own publication about the use of cu soil in the urban environment uh like soil volume um that's sort of how we calculated soil volume for like Moorfield place by using that casey tree formula so um just some interesting stuff i see jackie your hand is up yeah i googled uh exchange street portland maine and uh, it went directly to that park because Exchange Street is pretty only a few blocks long. And the photograph on Google Maps was taken in 2017. So I don't even know if it's up to date. But okay. anybody who wants to can Google it and take a look. It's There's a lot of trees there. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot. There's, uh, oh man, there's, there's, tam there's Tamarack. There's Tamarack. There was... Betula Nigra was in there. There was oh, there was a lot of uh, witch hazel. Um, there was a uh, white fir, which I thought looked really. A, it's a beautiful looking tree. The other thing too, while I'm thinking about this, is that <clears throat> is that I in Oslo, North in Portland, and I actually got to walk around um, with the former tree warden of Port Portland. He sort of gave us a little tour. He, they planted, a, they built a lot of uh, tree planting wells. And what they did is the, the tree planting wells are not flush with the sidewalk. 
the tree planting pits are six to eight inches above the sidewalk level. And hmm. one of the reasons they did that was to prevent um, salt runoff from sidewalk salting to run into the actual pits themselves. Hmm. So I thought that was really interesting. And it made me think about our own Main Street redesign. So because Main Street is going to require, uh, once it's completed, to have a lot of um, de-icing uh, agents potentially because of the amount of hardscape that's going to be around there. So I'm just made me think to try and I I haven't seen the uh that kind of detail will be in like the 75% design plans which aren't uh public yet that I'm aware of. I don't I don't even think they're finished, but just food for thought. Oh that's interesting. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, yeah I'm you're... also kind of interested in that structural soil data too about it sounds like it's very positive. I don't know if they use permeable pavement or. In some locations, in some of the parking lots, they did some, they didn't, but I mean, Nina Basic, who I've, uh, I listened to multiple talks that she's given is just really like the expert and Andy and Nina, yeah. because of the universe, uh, university of Ithaca, they work very closely together, um, on projects around Ithaca. So yeah, Andy. So we're, we're we're guaranteed to have structural soil in the Main Street redesign, correct? Don't know the answer to that question yet. Structural soil or silver cells, one of the two. Okay. So again, that's all. Because I know I sometimes things get cut from budgets. Uh, uh, they do, and there's no point in planting trees if we're not going to plant them in the correct soil right. volume. So. But that's for now, we'll just wait till the plans come out and then we get to review them and then we'll we can have a, a try to make as much commentary as possible. So. OK, anyone else have anything else they want to add before we. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. No. Wow. Well, it was great to see you all. I'm so glad I did not forget to tell you that Rob said hello. <laughs> I would have been really, I would, I would have called you all up afterwards and said, I forgot <laughs> to tell you. Uh, but anyways, um, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll also move. Um, could we have a second to that uh, motion? All right. Um, <laughs> on the motion? Uh, seeing none, just uh, raise your hands. We'll be good to adjourn the meeting. Thank you. It's unanimous. All right. Thank you, everyone.